All right, everyone, welcome in. We are diving right into, well, uh, a bit of a theological storm today. Oh, is that what we're calling it now? A theological storm. Well, yeah. I mean, how else would you describe it? Pope Francis really stirred the pot with that recent statement of his. I'll give you that. It's definitely got people talking. Talking, debating, some downright fuming from what I've seen. And we're here to dissect it all, of course. That's what we do, right? Oh, yeah. Deep dive and all that. So where were we? Oh, right. Pope Francis. He goes and says, quote, all religions are a path to God. And just like that, boom, fireworks. Especially, it seems, from some corners of the Christian community here in the U.S. We've got these two articles, both zeroing in on the, uh, shall we say, less than thrilled reactions from some Christian leaders. Yeah, less than thrilled might be an understatement in some cases. We're talking full-on doctrinal opposition here. Because at its core, this isn't just about, like, different denominations disagreeing on the finer points of theology. This cuts to the heart of salvation, which, let's be honest, is a pretty central tenet for most branches of Christianity. To put it mildly, yes. The idea that salvation is found only through Jesus Christ is a cornerstone of many Christian denominations. And Pope Francis, well, he seemed to be suggesting that there might be you know, other valid paths up the mountain. Which, depending on how you interpret it, can be seen as a direct contradiction to some very deeply held beliefs. To get a sense of just how significant this is, I think we need to rewind a bit, set the scene, so to speak. The Pope made this statement at an interfaith youth meeting in Singapore, of all places. Ugh, Singapore. Now that's a detail worth noting. It's not exactly known for being a homogenous society when it comes to religion, is it? Not even close. You've got everything there all jumbled together. Buddhism, Islam, Hinduism, Taoism, Christianity, you name it. A true melting pot of faiths, which makes the context of the Pope's statement all the more, shall we say, provocative. Provocative is a good word for it. So picture this. You've got this room full of young people, all these different faiths represented. And Pope Francis, he stands up and says, and I quote, If you start to fight, my religion is more important than yours, mine is true, and yours isn't, where will that lead us? There's only one God, and each of us has a language to arrive at God. Some are Sheikh, Muslim, Hindu, Christian, and they are different paths to God. I can practically hear the collective gasp from certain quarters of the Christian world as those words left his mouth. And that gasp was quickly followed by, well, let's just say some very pointed rebuttals. Pointed indeed. And few were as pointed as the response from Bishop Joseph Strickland. Yeah, he did not mince words, did he? Basically came right out and said that to deny Jesus as the only path to God is to deny Christ himself. His words, and I quote, If we deny Christ, he will deny us. He cannot deny himself. Strong stuff. And pulling directly from scripture, no less. A classic tactic in theological debate, anchoring your argument in the text itself. Hard to argue with that, at least for those who view scripture as the infallible word of God. Right. And, and it's worth mentioning, too, that Bishop Trickland, well, he's got a history of um, disagreeing with Pope Francis. To put it mildly, yes. He was actually removed from his position last year after repeatedly and very publicly clashing with the Pope on a whole range of issues. LGBTQ plus outreach, banning pro-choice Catholic politicians from receiving communion. I mean, the list goes on. There was even a petition circulating online claiming he was ousted for, and I quote, publicly correcting several heterodox statements from Pope Francis. So there's definitely a history there, a pre-existing tension that adds another layer to his response in this case. Definitely a lot to unpack there. But Bishop Strickland wasn't the only one pushing back against the Pope's statement. We also have Calvin Robinson, who, and this is interesting, recently moved from England to lead a church in Michigan. So, not exactly shying away from engaging in the American religious landscape, then. It would seem not. And he takes a very similar stance to Bishop Strickland, called the Pope's statement counterscriptural, even pointed to the Gospel of John, where Jesus says, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Again, using scripture as a direct counterpoint, underlining the importance of scriptural interpretation in these kinds of debates, because, let's be honest, how one chooses to interpret those words can lead to very different conclusions about the nature of faith and salvation. It's like they're speaking two different languages, even though they're both ostensibly rooted in the same faith, isn't it? 
That's a great way to put it. And it's precisely that tension, that clash between different interpretations of the same core beliefs that makes this whole conversation so fascinating. Fascinating, frustrating, and if we're being honest, more than a little messy. Welcome to the world of theology, my friend, where even the seemingly straightforward can quickly become a labyrinth of interpretation, debate, and deeply held conviction. And we're just getting started. It's like we're witnessing a head-on collision, you know? between these two deeply held convictions, both rooted in faith, but with completely different interpretations of what that faith means in a global context. It really makes you think about how these beliefs actually play out in the real world, you know? It's one thing to debate theology in a vacuum, but how do these beliefs actually influence how we interact with others who hold different views, you know what I mean? Well, it certainly raises questions, big ones too. Tolerance, respect, even the very nature of interfaith dialogue. If your starting point is that your belief system is inherently truer than another, how can you really have a dialogue, a genuine one, that values and respects those other viewpoints? It's a paradox, isn't it? To say, I believe my faith is the only true path to salvation, but I also respect the validity of your completely different belief. How do you square that circle? And that's where things get really interesting, see, because even within Christianity itself, you have a spectrum of perspectives on this very issue. Some Christian denominations are much more open, much more inclusive in their view of salvation. So it's not as black and white as those who believe in exclusive Christian salvation and everyone else. There are shades of gray, even within Christianity. Absolutely. You've got a good number of Christians who are all about interfaith dialogue. They see it as an opportunity, a chance to build bridges, find some common ground, you know, based on shared values, even if those values are expressed differently across religious traditions. Multiple paths up the same mountain kind of thing. That's the idea. It's not about trying to convert the other side or prove your faith is superior. It's about respect, learning from each other, figuring out ways to coexist peacefully, even with those differences in belief. Makes sense. Seems like a more, I don't know, more realistic approach, maybe. Yeah. Especially in the world we live in now, everything's so interconnected. It definitely reflects the reality on the ground, doesn't it? Globalization and all that. Mm. People from every faith, every background, constantly bumping up against each other. Got to find a way to make it work, right? Right. And this whole conversation, it gets me thinking about personal interpretation. You know, I mean, we talk about scripture, doctrine, all that. But how much of this is just down to how individuals understand and interpret those things. That's a really important point and honestly one that gets overlooked a lot. Because even within the same faith, the same denomination even, you can have wildly different interpretations of the same text, the same teachings. What one person sees as this unchangeable truth, another person might see as more, well, more metaphorical right. or open to interpretation, you know? So even within a group that's supposed to be on the same page, you're going to have disagreements, different ways of seeing things. That's the thing about faith, isn't it? It's deeply personal. And expecting a single text, a single interpretation to be the definitive answer to these massive theological questions, well, it's probably not realistic. Like trying to take a picture of the Grand Canyon with a single snapshot. You're never going to capture all of it. Perfect analogy. Religious texts, traditions, they're like that. Complex, full of layers. Centuries of interpretation layered on top of each other cultural influences, evolving understandings of the divine. It's a lot. A lot indeed. And I feel like we're getting into some seriously deep philosophical waters here. We are. There's no doubt about it. But they're important waters to navigate, don't you think? Especially in a world where, let's be honest, religious differences are often used as a weapon, a way to divide and conquer. So how do we, in our own lives make sense of it all. I mean, we've looked at different viewpoints, the historical stuff, even talked about individual interpretation. Mm -hmm. What are people supposed to take away from this, especially if they're wrestling with these same questions? I think the biggest takeaway, the most important one, is just understanding that wrestling with those questions, that's part of it. It's part of the journey. Faith isn't about easy answers or claiming you've got the right interpretation. It's about constantly searching, constantly questioning, even being open to the possibility that what you believe today, well, it might evolve over time. So embracing the mystery, mm. being open to change, as opposed to clinging to rigid certainty. Now you're getting it. Humility, that's the key. Realizing that you can hold on to what you believe 
but also recognize that someone else might see the same text, the same tradition in a totally different light. And that's okay. It doesn't make their experience any less real, any less valid. It's about remembering the human element at the heart of it all. Right? Exactly. Because at the end of the day, aren't we all just trying to figure things out, find our place in the universe, connect with something bigger than ourselves? That's a universal human experience. It is. It really is. It's like we're trying to find the right answers, yep. you know? But like with faith, it's like those answers are always shifting, like almost on purpose. And maybe that's part of it, right? Like maybe it's not about those clear cut answers, but about how we wrestle with those big questions, even when they make us uncomfortable. And how we treat each other along the way, uh -huh. right? Because if faith is supposed to be about love and compassion and all that, well, then how we engage in these conversations, it's got to reflect that. Couldn't agree more. It's not just about being right or proving your point. It's about approaching these disagreements with a certain amount of humility, you know, recognizing that someone else might see the world completely differently, and that's okay. It's about understanding, isn't it, that just because someone interprets something differently doesn't automatically make them wrong or any less worthy of respect. Now you're getting it. It's about holding on to your own beliefs without trying to force them on others. You know, being open to the idea that your understanding might be incomplete or even change over time. It's almost like the more you learn, the more you realize you don't know. There's a certain freedom in that isn't there. Letting go of the need to have all the answers and just embracing the journey. I like that. Embracing the journey. It's like we've been talking about this whole time. We, we might have different paths, different interpretations, different ways of understanding our place in the world. Mm -hmm. But it's that shared sense of wonder, you know, that desire to connect with something larger than ourselves that ultimately brings us together. Beautifully said. And isn't that a great note to end on? The idea that even in the midst of disagreements, even when we see the world through different lenses, there's still room for respect, for understanding, for that shared sense of awe and wonder. A lot to think about, for sure. So to our listeners out there, as you continue on your own journeys, remember to approach these conversations, these big questions with an open mind and an open heart. Keep asking, keep exploring, keep listening, and you never know what you might discover. Until next time, happy diving, everyone.
can we find strength? <laughs>